So let me set up the question for you first. I've written it down. They give you this monstrous looking thing, and then they say, okay, look, I, I don't want the whole expansion, which is kind of the point behind the question. They're not looking for the whole expansion. They only want, they don't even want a term. They just want the coefficient of a particular term in the expansion, okay? Do you remember the example we looked at this morning uh, with this? X squared plus one on X to the five, right? Do you notice, when we did that, you had the x squared terms, you had the one on x terms, and then when you sort of collide them together, well, x's and x's, they start to cancel. And you got powers that came out nice and easily, like x to the 10, x to the 7, 4, etc. Okay? In the same way here, clearly, if I were to do this whole expansion, these x terms and these uh, 1 over x terms are clearly going to interact with each other and cancel each other out. So the question is, how can I take advantage of that knowledge knowing that these two eventually are going to dance in some way to give me these, how can I use that to avoid expanding the whole thing? I do have to write this first line. There's no way to get around this first line, really. You can see what I've done is I've just put in the binomial coefficients. I've turned this into an expanded version of itself, done the same as this, and then I pause. Okay. Let's have a look. If I were to do this in long form, what would I do? And the answer is, there are four terms in the first set of brackets, there are three terms in the next set of brackets, and I would have to say, this times one, two, three. And then I'd have to go, this times one, two, three. And I'd have to do that all the way through to the end, okay? But I don't have to. Look at this. See this term here, right? Do you notice that when I multiply it by this guy and this guy, I don't care what it will end up with, you won't get an x to the zero term. Can you see that? I don't need to calculate. One times this is not going to give me an x to the zero, because this is an x to the negative one, right? Do you want to get the door closed? Thanks. <laughs> this term times this term is going to be useless to me. Right? It will not contribute to the x to the 0. Okay? In the same way, this 1 time, thank you, times this is also going to be worthless to me. It will not contribute to the x to the 0 because it's, uh, it's an x to the minus 2 and there's nothing to balance it out. Do you see that? So I can actually ignore a whole bunch of terms and look straight to the ones that I need. For instance, um, I dodged this with this. The reason why is because that is a term that I want. Do you see? It's a constant term. That's what x to the 0 is. It's a constant. Okay. So 1 times 1 is going to form a part of the x to the 0 term when I'm finished here. Okay. So I'm just going to highlight them in one color. Then I'm going to go along to the next term. This one here, can you see, if you multiply this by this, it's useless. It's not going to give you an x to the 0. But if I multiply this by this, you will get an x to the 0 term. Do you notice that? Because there's an x to the 1, there's an x to the minus 1, and they will cancel each other out. Okay. So therefore, this term, if it pairs up with this term, will give you something that will contribute. Lastly, you've got an x squared term here. This is one of the wonderful things about binomial expansion. <coughs> they become very predictable. Right? This guy has to match up with this one. Do you, do you see it? x squared. Uh, x to the negative 2, so they're clearly going to come together and give you an x to the 0. So I pair them up here. Okay, now what about that loader on the end? That x cubed term? What do I do with him? The answer is, if, well, if I'm only interested in x to the 0 terms, do you notice that multiplying by this, or this, or this, None of them will give you an x to the zero term. There's no one he can match up with, right? This is that, that poor guy who gets picked last on the cricket team, which I have no personal experience with. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, that x cubed term, you can safely ignore, right? It's never going to give you an x to the zero term, no matter what you pair it with, okay? So now, that's all I have to work out. These are the terms that are going to pair up. So I'm going to say, therefore, the coefficient 
of x to the zero is. And I have to say this, I have to state, okay, now I'm working something different because you'll see why what I'm writing is not going to be this expansion. It's just one tiny part of the expansion that will give me this, okay? So I'm gonna follow the colors that I've used. Uh, one times one is one. Uh, what's the red one gonna give me? Let's see, uh, I'm gonna have three times negative a third Sorry, never, yeah, because this is going to cancel. Okay, actually, I'll just write the x there because I haven't cancelled it yet. Times what? What is this term here? It's going to be, uh, yeah, 4 over x. Do you agree with that? That's the red one. And then here comes the blue one. Uh, let's see here. Uh, that's a plus 3x squared on 9. Does that look okay? Yeah. Times this guy, which is. 4 on x squared. Do you agree? Yeah, so I've just I've, I've paired those up and because I've done my selection of pairing carefully, you can see those x's will cancel, those x squareds will cancel, so now I'm actually ready to compute the numbers. I've got 1, 3 divided by 3, but it's a negative, so that's going to be minus 4. Do you agree? Yeah? I'm only getting one or two nodes. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, over here, 3 divided by 9 is a third, and there's a 4, so this is 4 over 3. Um, 1 take away 4 is negative 3, plus 1 and a third is negative 1 and 2 thirds. Yes? Yes? It's minus 5 over 3. Minus 5 over 3. Okay. So, of course, if you wanted to, uh, you can go ahead and you can expand this whole thing, but you're going to end up with, think about it, how many terms, if I had expanded this entire line, how many terms would there be on the next line before I finished? How many terms? Yeah. 12. There will be 12, exactly right. Because you're going to get three terms from here, combining with here, then you'll get another three for this one, and then another three for this one, and so on. Eventually, those 12 terms will collapse down, things will cancel out, but I don't have to do that. I already know the terms that will cancel out to give me an x to the 0 term. Okay? And in the same way, I could ask for an x squared term. I could ask for an x cubed term. Whatever is particular to the question that I'm looking at. Okay?